When we get up in the morning Along with coffee, toast and cake If you like the old stone eroding You like to wake and bake Now let's join Craig Reed and Drift Martin As we head out on the road So sit right back but the right in It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show Good morning Podcast 149 of the Stone Roadie Show Action all righty then, and looky here, looky here. Hey, it's Monday morning. It's Friday. Uh, what is today? It's Friday, March 29th here. And it's, uh, hey, it's Wake and Bake on Easter. Easter, what is this? It's uh, Friday. This is, uh, what do they call it? Good Friday. Yeah, it's Good Friday. And it's, uh, what else they call today? Oh, it's thank God it's Friday for all you working folk out there. Of course, me and Griff, we're, we're retired. We don't care if it's Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. We're, we're off every day of the week and enjoying every minute of retirement. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's March 29th and it's, Wake and bake in the morning buzz, and it's podcast number, no, it's um, episode 32 of the Wake and Bake Morning Buzz, and my name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. the Stoned Roadie, and this is my co-host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. So what do we got going on this fine Friday there, Griff? Yeah, well, first off, I'm hoping we can make it through this podcast without my damn internet freezing up. You guys probably <laughs> noticed on the last podcast, and it does that. And I got some really crappy internet service over here, and uh, they come out all the time. And oh, there's water in the box, you know. And every time there's water in the box, water in the box. I say, well, put a damn drain in there or something. Well, the squirrel's eating through the wire too. <laughs> and we can't stop that. And that's what happens is the squirrel eats through the wire and then the water runs down the wire into the box and sounds like bullshit to me. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for the coffee, TP. I really needed it this morning. Go Is that up. that Jack Daniels coffee? Yeah, to wake me up so I can get a buzz. <laughs> that damn TP, she's one hell of a damn character now. I, I tell you what. <laughs> You know, she's what you call a Trump Republican patriotic woman. Yeah, those, she is, are, yeah. those are the coolest kind right there. Uh, all you lady Trump supporters. That's just really cool when I see that. And she's uh, she's funny as hell, too. Yeah, I, po I posted a post that said one thing I like about Republican women, they don't have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> and if they do, I wouldn't care. You know, another damn vote, as long as they're not, you know, uh, a, a dummy liberal. <laughs> you know. But yeah, so uh, um, if the uh, internet freezes up, I'll try to go in there and edit it out. I missed it last night because what I got to do is, um, or this, uh, yes, the last time, what I got to do is I got to go in and watch the podcast all the way through to see if it freezes. And then I got to edit it out. And that's kind of a pain in the butt. We got a lot of great comments uh, on the uh, on the last podcast, and we're going to go over some of the comments again. Um, and Craig, you said you got a Sunday morning acoustic that you're going to send me um, that somebody did. Uh, you guys don't forget about those Sunday morning acoustics. Uh, it's free advertisement. You know, if you got an original song and you want to play it on an acoustic guitar send it to Craig's email right there and then he'll look at it and most likely we'll put it on there. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's free advertisement and, um, we, uh, we're trying to help people out that want to get 
their music out there and nobody's been sending any in. So, uh, you know, don't forget about that. It's, it's just one that we pop up on Sunday morning and you can let everybody enjoy your music. So I think his name was Gordon. I think that was his name. I was, God, I, I'm, I, you know, I have a hard time thinking of names. I think his name was Gordon and I wrote him and said, Hey man, he wrote a pretty good song. It had a, had a bunch of stuff that reflected on stuff that, that Ronnie wrote. It was a pretty cool song. And then that other guy, what uh, I forget his name, that's always posting stuff on Facebook. He wrote one that's more politically oriented. You know, I don't know if he, if he kind of took what I said about Ronnie would have, would have had a lot of ammunition to make write songs with all the crap going on. I, I, I posted a thing that Archie said, you know, he said, I hate to be sarcastic, but you guys are giving me so much ammo. I hate, to, I hate to waste, <laughs> to waste it. You know, it's about the way it is. Boy. But yeah, yeah. He, said, he said, said a pretty good song and, and he sent it to me instead of Griff and he sent it in uh, with all the, uh, with all the drawing stuff. So I was going, uh, putting all the drawing stuff in, in in a sequential order today and i ran across it and listened to it it's a pretty good song yeah so we're gonna maybe put that up on the sunday morning acoustic here it's just, just one song though but hey. he's got others maybe we can uh maybe he listens to this we'll have me write another one by tomorrow or whatever and didn't you say if somebody sends in um some money as a donation that if it's enough you'll give them a sticker haven't you been doing that no 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 they uh when they when they send in uh well I, you know they send in 25 books i send them a sticker yeah yeah and right. then they ask yeah. me if they to be in the uh in the drawing yeah yeah okay well you know that's something right there so but, uh, uh, dave dave he dave our disciple he sent me a couple of things too and wanted to know who that guy was with ronnie and ron eckerman and i wrote him back that was uh um bobby pridden um the who's monitor man that was uh the bald guy yeah 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 that's that's bobby pridden he's that was the who's monitor guy with uh with uh, Ron Eckerman and Ronnie. Yeah, you see him pictured a couple of times and some stuff, yeah, but, and then he wanted to know who the other guy was in that other picture, and it was Roberto Delgato. Yeah, that's who yeah. that was. Yeah, yeah. And, and But I wasn't in that picture. I don't know where I was that day, yeah. I was yeah, probably, and, and I was if probably there's, stoned. If, there, <laughs> if there's things that we can't think of, we're really getting helped out pretty good on the comments. Well, we appreciate all you guys with the skin formation on the skin formation channel. Yeah, this um, has been working out good. I didn't want to write a book. I just wanted people to ask me questions and I would, you know, try to answer the questions. And it seems like we're finally coming around to people, you know, uh, asking, you know, the questions they want to know. And we'll try to answer them here on the stone yeah. roadie show <laughs> yeah and, and if and if can't if craig can't remember it then you know we'll just tell you i I'll don't just remember say, I, I can't remember <laughs> yeah i'm Maybe not gonna seek any gratification can. that i don't i'm not uh you know rewarded of or uh, uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever well it's better than making up a lie yeah you know? yeah <laughs> and we've uh, been getting a lot of good feedback too on the uh the first responders and the all the audios that the kent griffith and mike o'hara um uh interviews that's uh some really pretty neat stuff you know i mean if you if you kind of like if you're looking at it from an investigative standpoint and if you uh if you uh, don't really care to hear anything about the fatalities on the plane crash and graphic stuff, then don't listen to it. And, and I don't blame you, but this is just for people, you know, that, uh, that know that time's passed and this is all public information now. And so, um, uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's helping out the, uh, plane crash survivors, uh, you know, our channel, that's, that's what we do. And, and that's how we help them out. So you guys, uh, keep, liking and subscribing and um we'll get 
uh, more money for that uh, in our monetization. So you got another guy coming up, Charles Dunnigan, and he's the uh, managing editor, editor for Enterprise Journal Reporter. And he's uh, on the interview uh, on the next on after this jibber jabber. So stay tuned for that. Don't go away after Craig and I get done with a jibber jabber here. And uh, we'll go right into that guy. And we still have several more left to go through. So, so that's kind of, you know, cool. do you know, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to think about it. who, who need uh, who, uh, how's Mark Howard doing? Has, has anybody heard it since he's got his, uh, his, uh, um that bone shaved down somebody asked yeah. me today they want to they wanted to make a donation but they wanted to know who who needed it the most and i'm i'm going you know everybody that we take collect money for could could really use it you know paul oh, well yeah. i think i think i don't think paul i think he's pretty much secluded and and, and more or less just stays at home and I know if you're listening, Paul Welsh, you, you smoke too many damn cigarettes. You're a chain smoker, and it ain't helping you none, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, Mark Howard, I, I just want to know how he's doing. I hate him, anybody to go through that kind of pain, you know. He's dealing with more pain than I think anybody else is. But uh, I don't know, Gene Odom, he, I, he deals with a lot of pain. He just he doesn't complain about it, though. But yeah, all those, you know, all five of those people, you know, could really, could really use the support, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't know who needs it, who's the worst off, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, Mark, Mark Frank, you know, he had those strokes, but last time I talked to, to Mark Frank, he seems like he's doing better than he had in the, in the, in the past, you know, in the past, you know, he's, uh, not 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 stuttering like that like he used to like i do sometimes <laughs> trying to find the words you know well if you're if you're uh you know question and sending uh who you're gonna send it to it does uh, it you know it's not gonna matter everybody's in bad shape you know right now all all those guys are in yeah bad they're all shape, in their 70s know? yeah you know? it's yeah uh, Leslie, you know, she, she battles with pain every day. I mean, they're all tough as hell, you know? Yeah. I get, yeah. Males. Leslie, I guess does deal with, I'm sorry to keep yeah. interrupting you. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So if you, if you send it to, you know, the wrong person, if you got to mix it, don't, it don't matter. They, they all need it. So, um, you know, that old, you talking about Gene, that, that damn Gene, that guy, he, I think he's he's got some kind of a thing for driving. I think it's therapeutic for him to drive because <laughs> he drove all the way out to uh, Houston to uh, do an event with that Lone Star Skinner, and he couldn't find it, and he got so damn aggravated. He was only two miles away from it, and he drove all the way back home. God, I hate to get lost in Texas. My God, that's a big damn state. Gee, I know. you got to drive all day to get across that sucker. Matter of fact, I talked to Gene today. He called me. He said that they're kind of working on that memorial stone and getting it all straightened out. Yeah. The yeah. board has figured out what they're doing. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I believe he's getting ready to make a trip out to the monument in the next couple of weeks. Um, something going on up there i gotta send him up there with uh with these pictures back here to deliver them to uh ricky wascom so gene's gonna be coming over to my house here probably uh my next week i think next week and uh i'm gonna take him out in bad company two t double o bad i told g two. i I told Gene today that if if that if that went on, you know, if that happened down there, I said I doubt that it's going to happen. They're already starting the shenanigans, you know. I don't know what's going on with that ship that hit that bridge, but it's got a lot of things that are happening that are pretty significant to, uh, you know, and that's not really a major port, you know. That's that's not even on the top ten. And they're saying, you know, that due to that, there's going to be 
you know, uh, uh, it's going to affect a, a lot of things, food prices and everything. And it's not even one of the top 10 ports, you know, yeah. so I think they're going to try to use that for some of the stuff that's going on. And I don't know if you guys watch monkey works. There's a, um, podcast called monkey works, but man, that guy says we're, we're, we're headed for war. And he says, you, you guys better, you know, with this administration that, that's going on now and the, and the deep state and everything. And, and, uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of us have woke up and are trying to put uh, Mr. T in there, but there's a lot of people that are still brainwashed, brain dead or whatever. And, um, you know, there's and the deep state, you know, there's not a lot of deep state players, but there's a lot of people that are under the trance of that deep state and they're just as dangerous as the deep state. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I if I was all y'all, I'd, I'd kind of stack up, stock up on, on what you might need because, uh, you never know what day it's going to come down that it's going to be like nine 11 or whatever. And you're, and you're, uh, you know, your grocery store shelves are going to be bare, you know, but, uh, so just don't say we didn't warn you, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you... th this, this information, you know, is everywhere, everywhere, but you know, it's maybe, maybe when it's on the stone roadie show, maybe you'll, maybe you'll listen to the stone roadie. You know? <laughs> That's not very likely, but we can either, we can either, even I hope that you, you know, might, might might take his suggestions and you know and uh whatever. Well, there's a lot of questions about that ship you know about why it didn't have tugboats around it and then yeah the, it's a black uh, swan event yeah it's uh yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's fishy i i'm smelling a rat on the whole thing <laughs> i don't know we're gonna find out uh, there's there's 48 did. there's 48 48 military facilities that feed off that port and that 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 bridge is going to be closed down for four or five years i mean it's not going to yeah. be and and biden said the united states is going to rebuild it we're, yeah. we're, our country america will rebuild it why why isn't the insurance company for that ship going to rebuild that bridge you know because I mean, they, they why, why is it. american public paying for it i mean they want to they want to put it in a bill and they can add on all kinds of this other crap on there on it it's it's the whole thing's planned i believe it's just i mean somebody might go oh it's, come on it's Craig, stinking. Come on, Craig. i mean it's you it's know? really stinking yeah <laughs> but, but you know i i tell you what th this is what really gets me is i i've got a mcdonald's right down the road from my house and and every day i go when i drive by that mcdonald's i see that that the drive through is just lined up all the way down the road and you can look anywhere on the internet and on nutritional websites that food is nothing but poison coming out of that place and and everybody you should know that by now but they're still eating it i mean well you can nothing. almost go into a sit down restaurant for the amount of money i think some places are charging Ten, twelve dollars for a Big Mac or something like that. It's crazy. Even more. I think if they came up with a McDog shit muffin, people <laughs> would still go down there and eat it. Uh, they'd be no. like, "Oh well, yeah." I mean, the government's not going to let them sell anything that won't hurt you. Oh, you <laughs> oh God! Just, uh, yeah. So get you go get your dog shit McMuffin and uh, enjoy it because that's about what it. I think it'd be healthier to eat that, honestly. So. But yeah, anyway, and, and Craig, that kind of reminds me, you said some lady was, uh, trying oh, to God, yeah. and, <laughs> I, I, I laugh at the at Facebook about every, I mean, I get a lot of Facebook requests, you know, and I got to kind of tune them down cause I'm a, approaching that 5,000 mark, you know? So, <laughs> but I, I got, I got one that I've, I've been friends with this woman. I noticed her picture, but, but all of a sudden I get a. I get an uh, uh, instant message from her, from her, or and it, and it says it's for her. She said this is a different name, and the name, the name of the the person that they're using is uh, Phyllis Burke, but it's somebody else that's going by her name, and they said that they're some kind of a person and uh, that's kind of a I don't know agent for publishers clearing where publishers clearing house and that uh i 
I want a million dollars, <laughs> but uh, in order to collect that million dollars, I got to send her a two hundred dollar Apple gift card, you know, <laughs> to, to, and then she can turn that into the appropriate people to get me my million dollars. But I got to, yeah. I got to go right. get an Apple gift card. I'm kind of, you know, it, I know it's a scam, but I'm just playing with it. You know, I go. I said, well, why do I, why would Publicers Warehouse need me to get a gift card from Apple? You know, that seems kind of strange. So, so that I find, I finally got to thinking that I went and bought the gift card. Then now I'm saying, well, I can't get my camera to focus on that. There's not the back of the card like you want. She goes, well, just write the numbers down. Just write yeah, the oh, yeah. She, down. Just give her your <laughs> bank account. She'll take care of all that for you, Craig. <laughs> so I've got to keep her going on this one. I'm having fun with this one. Just that make yeah. her work, work for it. And then, and then Craig asked me, he goes, why would somebody think I'm that stupid? And I said, <laughs> I said, they might, she might think you're a liberal. You, know, she might think that, you know, that you've been watching CNN and if you believe that shit, you'll believe anything. I mean, are people really that stupid? I mean, my <laughs> yeah, God. well, you got it. Some of these old people. And, man, and why did, know? why does Facebook let people like this get, get by? They've got to know that. I mean, somebody has had to turn her in before saying that, you know, this person's trying to, you know, scam people. It's like. It's like this yeah. whole damn country is just trying to harbor criminals. I mean, there's, you know, they're sending, they're sending a lot of these refugees up to, up to uh, Reno, and uh, and they're and there's and they're sending the all these uh, military planes up there uh, around Reno to watch them. Why are why is the government letting people into our country that that they have to watch? It's it's crazy. You're Y'all yeah. are nuts. I mean, y'all, I, 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 y'all are nuts. My God, y'all are nuts. There's no, I mean, no accountability for anything except, I mean, if you're a Looney tune, you get away with everything. But if you're seeming to be like a rational person, then you're going to get in trouble. So all of us have got to stand up and go, no, we're right. not that yeah. damn stupid. You know, we, yeah. you know, it's crazy. And I hear what I hear what is, uh, the, the real reason why the government is so afraid of, uh, AL artificial intelligence, AI, AI I'm sorry, not AL <laughs> artificial intelligence. Yeah. Boo, you know, is because is because AI is like d dwelling into, you know, the reality of truth and common sense. Yeah, and the AI will expose all these lies that the government are trying to feed y'all. You know, even even with um, racism, you know, the, the uh, ALs, uh, you know, uh, will expose all the everything that all these lies. AL AI <laughs> looks at it. It looks at it on a common sense level, and, it, and it's going to expose all this crap that they're trying to lay on you, idiots out there. You know, yeah. so that's why they thats why the government's afraid of AI because it's going to expose the truth of what the bullshit that they're feeding you, idiots. Like your, like your <laughs> puff diddy, your puff diddy people, and your, and your, and these people that followed follow uh taylor swift and they call them swifties <laughs> like a freaking idiots man just uh, <clears throat> uh yeah okay well we'll just move right along i don't want to get uh a bunch of comments about that but i do but i, I don't how some <laughs> brain dead freaking pothead brain dead fucking guy on the hell the stone roadie shows calling all the everybody a bunch of damn idiots well well you are <laughs> There's I mean, one just guy. Just look around. Just look around. You'll see. <laughs> There's one guy he puts in our comments all the time. You know, they just raised the uh, Social Security to 69, and he's just trying <laughs> to start shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm four years past that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, when they stop sending the check, the Social Security check, um, there, you know, there's going to be a riot in the streets. You know, I mean, it's uh, that people, 
that these old people will get out there in their wheelchairs and their walkers and they'll be raising hell on that. Well, there's one. a lot of people on social security that aren't old. Oh yeah. There is. Yeah. There's you a know, lot of, uh, yeah. I had a niece that was on social security when she, from time she was in her thirties or maybe even aren't younger. Yeah, some people, you know, they legitimately have like a lot of problems, you know, and they and they deny them. And then this guy stubs his toe and he goes down there and he gets a freaking check for two grand a, a, a month. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's that's it's it's kind of strange, man. It's how you play the game, I guess. But it's just not fair, is it, Craig? No, it's not. It taxes, oh, okay. Let's, you know, uh, well, you, tax. hey, you got a, um, a uh, Saturday night special coming up with Kathy. Yeah, Godsey me and Kathy Godsey night. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to uh, wear the lab coat tomorrow or are you going to wear it? No, no, no. I'll. You gave me the lab coat, so I'll wear the lab coat when I'm on here with you. But I was going to do it for podcast 150, but that's with Kathy Godsey. So I guess I'm going to have, have to think of another reason to wear it on podcast 151. Maybe. Maybe I'll get me some 151 rum and be a mixologist with my lab coat on. <laughs> Drink yeah. me some 151 at at, at, at uh, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> a mixologist. Yeah, that'll be a treat. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be Monday, right? Yeah, yeah. Monday yeah. morning, right after Easter Sunday. That'll be a good celebration of her. <laughs> yeah, uh, you you can have your Jack Daniels coffee and your one fifty one, and and yeah, you'd be all set, man. That's uh, sound like a plan. Okay, well let's uh let's jump into these comments, and then we'll finish up on the jibber jabber, and we'll go right into the Charles Dunnigan managing editor Enterprise Journal with the uh, Mike O'Hara interview, so you guys don't. Uh, forget to uh watch that i'll put a little thing on there to remind you um that it's coming up so you don't just click off so down in the comments here a lot of uh, really great comments everybody's uh, participating in it and it's really fun to go through and read them and and bring them to craig and uh, let him answer and comment on it and stuff um got a guy named jeff and he mentioned something about hey you need an online store where you can sell t-shirts. He wants one of those Dean Kilpatrick drawing shirts that I had a bunch of shirts. I drew that. Um, I don't think I've got one around here. Uh, I may have one. Yeah, this, uh, this is on my business card, but it's got that Dean Kilpatrick drawing and I put it on t-shirt. Well, it's kind of like a Dean. That's Kilpatrick. not Dean's drawing. I know, but it's a style of Gene. Dean, oh, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Kind of emulates it. A lot of people like that T-shirt. I got Dean's drawing on them on my little. Yeah, you Yeah, you do. On have my one. little doodad back here, I believe. So, but, um, yeah, that support survivors.net, um, Anna Ethington, um, she's uh, working on that thing. And, uh I don't know where she's at with it. It's quite a, a daunting task, uh, but we're going to, we're going to have like stuff on there in the uh, store and we're going to, we're going to hook Gene Odom up with a little store on there and you can go on there and maybe click on there on a calendar and go do a tour with him. So all kinds of cool things coming up. There's going to be a, an e-commerce section there where you can buy shirts and stickers and, and help support the, uh, plane crash survivors so yeah jeff uh stand by on that it might take a couple months uh i don't know how long it's going to take but we're working on that and um then uh we got a guy uh richard says why won't artemis come on the podcast well i got my opinion on that greg uh Oh, I don't know. He, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't know. Well, he, he, uh, I actually think he's still mad at Craig because Craig had to remove him. He was one of the guys that had to remove him off the stage up there in Canada when he was throwing the drums around. And I don't think he's 
quite forgiven you for that yet, I don't think. Uh, well, yeah, he gave me an awful dirty look when I was the one that kind of <laughs> had the guys kind of escort him off stage. But Gary told me to. Gary said, you know, you know, Artie's out of control to get him off the stage. So Gary signs my paycheck, so that's what I did. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, what, what happened, though? I mean, can you kind of go over what? I mean, I know he was throwing stuff, and it kind of had to do with Kurt Custer, didn't it? Well, I don't know. I heard I heard rumors that uh, Kurt Custer. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I what I uh, what I heard was that uh, the the, uh, the the Artemis was uh, was supposed to play the old stuff, and Kurt Custer was supposed to play the new stuff. You know that already didn't know the new uh, the new material from the new skinner and Artemis was supposed to play the old stuff and I guess uh, uh, Custer was kind of taking the lead to 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 Mister Saturday Night Special and uh, you know that, that's kind of Artemis's song and he got kind of irritated with it and kind of was throwing his drums off the stage and threw it a tambourine and hit Gary and Gary threw it back at him and, and, and Artemis continued to kick his drums off the stage and stuff like Keith Moon and, <laughs> and Gary Gary just said to, you know he was a little bit out of control that maybe we ought to get him off the stage <laughs> they were up there to play music not have a a riot. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we had Kurt Custer on, and I forget which podcast it was, but you guys go back and check out. That was a really great podcast with Kurt Custer on there, and he tells the story of of it on there. And, uh, yeah, so it's that, you know, and then, of course, uh, Artemis. The funeral and, brochure. I, I heard he's yeah, heard about the funeral brochure, and, you know, he should understand that, you know, I mean, God, and I donated the money to Mark Howard so he could get his leg operated. All the, you know, I've sold like four of those and all the money's gone to the survivors. I don't understand how anybody could, you know, possibly take offense to that, you know, I mean, and, and the reason I did it in the first place was to, uh, you know, Gary would understand, you know, I mean, Gary had a little thing about Elvis, you know, and I, I was trying to sell his funeral brochure for more than Elvis's was, you know, to, you know, even make him more famous than he already was. And I, I think Gary would laugh about it. I don't think he would get mad about it. You know, I don't, you know, God, who, who would, who would get mad if somebody, a friend of theirs, would sell their funeral brochure for eight thousand dollars and then donate it to charity? Or well, it wasn't eight thousand. What was it? Uh, Four thousand. No, it was. Well, you sold two thousand. Yeah, a thousand. I don't, yeah. Well, yeah, Artie, we love you, man. We don't want. That yeah, was eight hundred, not eight thousand. <laughs> so, Artie, if you're listening, you, you know we. Uh, all uh all is uh okay with us as far as you know you go man we love you and we want you to come on and you know we we appreciate you and nobody's mad from this end to you so hopefully you'll uh you'll uh forgive us for whatever it is we're doing oh and artemis it hates trump too so yeah. <laughs> that could be a big reason you know there's yeah, multiple I... reasons i guess <laughs> but you know you know whatever well, you know, we can't I don't make everybody against happy. Artemis. I don't have nothing against any of those guys, you know. And uh, I don't know if we talked about it the other day, but Paul Abraham went to one of the Skinner shows, you know, and he was, you know, Johnny was on last, the last Sundays. His last Sunday, he does a thing every Sunday, and he, you know, talked about uh, Paul going being at the show, and he was glad to see one of our former crew people at that at the show and it's funny because it, i tried to go and work a show and the manager tried to throw me out <laughs> so, well, well that's because you they don't like me very much that's because you peed on all of them on the bus 
<laughs> is that why? <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, whatever. I've seen them enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you think they'd forget it by now. How long ago was that, Craig? <laughs> oh, I have. I well, I retired in two thousand and six, five. So it's been almost twenty years. Yeah, I mean, you know, isn't there like some kind of a a, a forgiveness on time after a period of time? I mean, even no, though you I, did, even though it, you did, it's, it's, it's the it's the management that doesn't like me. You know, they've, you know, they haven't liked me since day one. So whatever. <laughs> Well, I think Gary liked having you around, you know, and he kind of like kept you there as long as he could until you peed on everybody. And then, <laughs> and then, and then he said, okay, yeah, I was, let him go. I left. I was in no shape to be on the road, man. I had that hepatitis and that, that medicine was really bad, man. It was, had me really crazy and i you know i was supposed to not be drinking and i was drinking you know so yeah. i was like billy and gear our uh, billy and leon man we we all had problems <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, okay. plane crash survivors my god you go through a plane crash you're gonna have personality problems <laughs> yeah that's why you know everybody that i know that was on that plane that to me they get a pass they could do anything they want you know i mean it's kind of like you know you get a pass um yeah oh well not to mention touring the world with leonard skinner that's probably a, like the dysfunctional tour event the uh, you know of the of the lifetime for people if they ever did that i mean you're talking about drugs and drinking and anything you can think of uh that's you know it's like uh seems like, like they'd have like to have people who survived that crash at the shows but that doesn't seem to be the case <coughs> yeah i think they want to forget about my that and they, evidently they have so but uh we'll pick up the slack and back to the comments, this guy named John says, uh, people practice and train for a lifetime for this level of skin formation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying, I've tried to deliver as much skin formation as I can, but you have to, you know, bear with me. I'm working with a handicap, you know, <laughs> and I'm not talking about b b Griff. I'm talking about my head. <laughs> I got serious brain damage, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, every now and then, you know, you, you surprise everybody, you'll pull something out there and, uh, you know, and it's like, wow, we never knew that. Yeah. Every once in a while, there's a light comes on up there and <laughs> shines a little brightness. <laughs> it flickers for a little bit. <laughs> then we've got uh, another person <clears throat> here says, can we hear some more sweet Connie stories? Well, <laughs> I didn't know that Bill Clinton, you know, had a, had a pining for sweet Connie and yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, that was some new skin formation there, that sweet yeah. Connie and, uh, you know, and she, uh, kind of helped uh, old Bill Clinton out. Yeah. Bill was curious about sweet Connie, you know, sweet Connie was famous, you know, and Bill's right there from little rock. He had to try some of that, you know, yeah, well, she was from <laughs> Arkansas. So. Yeah, yeah, Little Rock, yeah. She Sweet might have even helped out Hillary a little bit there, too. <laughs> I don't think Sweet Connie was bisexual. <laughs> well, she could have helped out, you know, Obama's old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for that. What, Mike? Big Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw a thing on Facebook. It showed... Uh, uh, that, uh, Bud Light girl on there, you know, and then it showed big Mike and it said the difference between the two is concealed and unconcealed carry. <laughs> <laughs> that Facebook yeah. can be brutal on those people. Some of the best stuff I've ever seen is on that Facebook when they're talking about these wing nuts. I just love that. The pure entertainment. And I share all of it as much as I can. So, uh, yeah, uh, well, the Sweet Connie, I don't know, you got any more stories about Sweet Connie, Craig? Oh, God, I got, there's a, there's a, but I don't know, I guess, last time I remember being, at, going to Little Rock and Sweet Connie showed up, I, I had to hide her on the, 
on the bus and 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 dale her, heard that she was there and come looking for her we had to hide her in the truck and <laughs> <laughs> she went to, out to all the buses looking for connie and we hit her in the equipment truck and <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Well, she looked yeah. pretty good back in the day, but there oh, at yeah. the end, she or, no, no, or well, maybe we know. hit, yeah, maybe we put them with the with the opening band. Or, I don't remember where we, I think we put her in multiple places, so they all couldn't find her. <laughs> she, she put, I think the opening band wanted to meet Connie. And, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> they would heard about Connie. <laughs> well she had a song written about her you know? <laughs> and uh she she was on several uh talk shows back in the day too so uh, uh connie was cool man she was smart i mean you know she was a school teacher and stuff she used to come on the bus and grade papers <laughs> oh my <laughs> god papers yeah she did <laughs> swear to god she did well she there you have it grade school papers there's a sweet connie uh <laughs> exclusive right there sweet connie used to come on the bus in grade school papers and who knows you might have had your paper on the bus getting graded if you had anybody you had come from little rock you might have if you had sweet connie yeah. for wouldn't that be funny to have a sweet connie for his teacher yeah if anybody had sweet connie for a teacher let us know that would be that would be nice we'll have you on and we'll interview you on that <laughs> You know, I mean, those teachers, some of those teachers were like that. You know, I remember well, we talked about that on one of the podcasts, uh, you know, how some of the teachers are, were a little loose, uh, not so much anymore, but they, back then they didn't really care. You know, you didn't get in trouble for it. Um, so, uh, okay. Well, and I'm moving right along. Ashley, uh, wants to ask here, did Alan ever mention why he didn't go by the name Larkin, why he went by Allen instead of Larkin. Larkin, Allen Collins. I didn't, you know, LAC, I don't know. You know, I guess, uh, I, well, you know, so when they, people call your house, they, when they, when they call, ask for Larkin, they weren't, they didn't know who they were talking about. So he went with Allen, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, maybe uh, he just liked, well, Allen you're talking about Allen. Jeff, Jeff asked me if, uh, if Alan could play after the crash and um, I, you know, I wasn't there after, after he, after he crashed. So I, you know, I um, kind of remember a little bit about it, but um, Chad said that he, he, uh, he was outside and Alan didn't know he was there and, and Alan was playing and he went in and, Alan, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really know personally, but I, I, I guess he could play a little bit, but he couldn't, you know, naturally he couldn't play like, like, you know, he used to, but you know, he could play a little bit, but you know. Yeah. Chad told me oh. that he came over there one day and he heard Alan didn't know he was there and Gene was out working in the yard and he goes, where's Alan? He goes, he's in the house. And, and so he goes in there, he hears him playing. Then he goes, Hey, you son of a bitch. I didn't think you could play. And then Alan threw the guitar behind the couch. And I said, well, how well was he playing? And he said, well, it sounded about like Gary. <laughs> <laughs> he could play as good as Gary. <laughs> oh like, God. You remember that Chad, when you told me that, I don't forget <laughs> anything like that, you know? So, yeah, um, I, I don't know. Uh, so you don't, you don't think he, he liked the name Larkin or he, he just liked Alan. I, did, I don't know. I would imagine. I don't know. He probably liked Alan better, you know, Larkin. then, uh, this guy, Brian, he says, uh, he mentions about, uh, Steve vest. He said that he used to play harmonica with the Allman brothers and there's actual video of him doing that. So, uh, Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know much. I heard about that Steve vest guy, but I never really knew a lot about it, but I'm sure Joe will probably call me and go, Griff, I told you all about Steve Vest, man. You already forgot. He was around before I was around, I guess, but I was watching a thing today where he was talking about, give me three steps where they were in that, the, the, that he was cutting a rug with, with a girl named Linda Lou. And he said, 
He said that wasn't really her name. Her name was Linda something. It wasn't Linda Lou, but Alan's uh, Alan's uh, mother in law or something was named Linda Lou or something, you know. But he got halfway through the story and said, "Well, I got to go." And he he must he must not um, when he was doing that he must not have had a, a YouTube subscription where he could do extended podcasts like you know like we have you know he, he was limited to a certain amount and then he said, I gotta go <laughs> and then he said I'll do part two because it was real short so he must not have had an, a, an extended um, uh, YouTube subscription thing like we do where he can yeah. Because we had a problem with that, we could only do what fifteen minutes, or what? what yeah, they, or yeah, free. they, uh, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing with the Zoom meeting. You know, you you have to uh, get uh, a a better subscription for if you want to go longer than thirty minutes on on a Zoom meeting. So yeah, you got to pay for everything. Uh, yeah, it ain't much. It's like one hundred and fifty bucks a year or something. Like that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, <coughs> Yeah, and this guy named Ronnie mentioned something about the blood oath. Uh, what's your perspective on that blood <coughs> oath, Greg? You remember the no, blood oath? No, there was oath? supposed to be five people or three people. There was supposed to be five, and then it went to three, and then it went to one, and then it went to none. <laughs> yeah, and, and do you think uh, that that caused Alan and Gary to lose some of their power and the, the Skinner name? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think Alan likes what's going on. You know, I don't, I don't think at, at the time of his death, I don't, I don't think he liked, uh, you know, what was going on. Um, you know, I heard, I heard some things about he, what he, he said, he didn't like them continuing, you know, you know, without him, I don't blame him, you know, I guess, you know, cause he was, but, uh, you know, I don't, like I said before, I don't have a problem with it. Ronnie always said one of these days, Johnny will be singing my songs and, you know, he is. So, but yeah, I, heard now, said, I heard the other day, so somebody a couple of days ago said that they, they don't belong to many Leonard Skinner fan sites on Facebook, but they joined one the other day. And one of the questions was, um, uh, we, do you promise not to ask any questions that are concerning Ricky Medlock? <laughs> yeah, because there's some people that are like diehard Ricky Medlock and some people, he's not even a real Skinnered guy. <laughs> so, yeah. People there's... got some real, boy, they're really, they're really opinionated about this band. Yeah. My God, they're oh, just yeah. really defensive. If you say something, they get all pissed off and stuff and, Oh my God, that yeah, you know, it's funny. That's why I, I just I had to get off of there because you know I don't always... belong to any of them things. I did, you know, I just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got enough. We've got our hands full doing what we're doing. I mean, I couldn't imagine having to be on the uh, on the fan sites having to deal with some of that stuff. But uh... and this guy, you remember we were talking about. Um, putting up a when you get your crick cleaned out putting up a hell house uh <laughs> over there by the by the dugout crick and then we could have you know the wishing well we could have the hell house with alan's car and uh this guy on here he says he likes that idea we'll have a, a big old party at craig's house with the yeah we'll house. have an ice skating party here <laughs> next winter Next step. Craig, Craig's not going to land, land clearing and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's, those are the people right there for all your <laughs> land clearing needs. <laughs> As for Tom, <laughs> but Craig's not going to build no hell house out there because that'll make his taxes go up. And he, ain't <laughs> sure. I pay enough taxes out here. It's crazy. <laughs> My God. Well, we can do a hologram. I was, I was, I was, you know, I pay them, but I contest them, you know, <laughs> I make it rough on them. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was mentioning about how I knew that I went to that, uh, air show with that Cambodian girl and she jumped in the ditch. 
<laughs> uh, when she heard that F-15 fly over, because I guess they used to do bombing raids in her country, and she didn't know what the hell that was. So she, I was walking along with her. She just jumped in the in the ditch real fast, and I was like, what the hell are you doing? And uh, this guy says, let's call us, let's bring a, a, a band, name a band called the Cambodian Ditch Bitches. <laughs> that would be a great name for a band yeah uh -huh. hey that could stick man that could stick the cambodian ditch bitches i'd go see them <laughs> <laughs> and then uh we've got one more question here and uh, we'll wrap it up and then go into that um <coughs> into that interview uh this, this guy here says since gary's passing it could be a girl i forget who who posted this but since gary's passing have you been in contact with dale and uh no could, i have you invite her on the podcast oh no i wouldn't i wouldn't i you know i wouldn't ask her to come on here if she went if she wanted to come on here she she knows how to get a hold of me but no i haven't talked to dale I, I i i had a number for him a long time ago but i haven't haven't tried to get a hold of her well when gary you know, called, i saw gary, i saw her at the i saw her at gary's funeral but yeah. you know and uh she was real nice to me and the, the girls you know like craig hey mom it's craig reed you know but you know that was before i sold the funeral brochure yeah See that that kind of <laughs> so, that kind of screwed. But I don't up. think I don't think I don't know. You know, I used to be pretty good friends with Dale. You know, yeah. But I mean, I don't know. You know. That's not like you. Know, I don't you know. Did. I don't know how any of them people think about me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> think you really care. <laughs> no, I don't really care. Well, I do care. I you know I don't want to have any rough feelings with you know well there's a type I of like person dale. craig that dale's, can do dale's, something oh dale's real cool man i love dale yeah um, there, there's certain people that can do things like you know if they do them they'll go oh well that's just craig but if <laughs> i dale get dale like knows that, i'd never do anything crazy. against gary you know my god yeah, she, I think I'm she sure. would know what I did. She knows the thing that me and Gary had about Elvis and me taking Gary through the doing the Elvis route and all that. Me and Gary had this little thing about Elvis. You know, I took him back. We played Las Vegas. I'd take him the back way through the kitchen and stuff like Elvis <laughs> used to do. You know, he used to dig it. You know, but. Uh, uh, yeah, you want to go ahead and close it out now? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Yeah, we uh, we just right. had a little internet issue here. We'll go ahead and wrap this up and go on into the uh, interview, the Mike O'Hara, and uh, and uh, play that interview. And I'm gonna have to get the cable people out here. I'm gonna edit out that so you guys won't have to see it. But, uh, <laughs> let's roll right into it, Craig. All righty then. Happy trails to you until we meet again and see you later, alligator at the wild crocodile and we're out of here. Cut. Uh, I was wondering, I, like I have uh, your paper uh, from the 21st of October 1977 and um, I was wondering if you could like, kind of fill in some details. Best I can. It's been a long time ago. Well, I imagine, yeah. It's, it's not, like I've talked to four other uh, gentlemen last, or three gentlemen last night, and uh, they can remember quite a bit. Um, I guess. Um, how did you know like, the plane was going down? Well, I didn't know it was going down, and I didn't get there until after it had gone down. Okay. Um, I was, uh, at that time, I was managing editor of the uh, newspaper, which was, uh, we're, we're a small community daily in Macomb, mm -hmm. which is the nearest, uh, nearest town of any size to where the plane went down. And as I recall, uh, it was late in the evening and I was, uh, I was already home and um, one of the other employees of the Enterprise Journal, uh, I think it was our advertising manager, uh, called me at home and said he heard 
I think he had been in the grocery store or something. I'm not sure where he heard it, but he heard somewhere that a plane had crashed uh, south of Macomb and uh, had a lot of people in it. Right. Uh, we didn't know who it was at the time. So uh, he he wanted to go down there, and uh, and I told him we met, or I, I forgot whether I picked him up or he picked me up, and uh, we went down together. And uh, it's off the interstate highway. Uh, someone had given us directions, and uh, we got off the interstate highway at, the, I believe it was a Gillsburg exit. Gillsburg is a little community about where the crash happened. And uh, we, I think maybe we saw the lights from a helicopter. I think they had gotten, gotten a helicopter up there by then. Uh, or it either got there shortly after. I really can't remember. I, I know before I left, there was a big uh, Coast Guard or Navy helicopter from uh, New Orleans that came up there and sort of hovered over the site. To, to give light, I think. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we, we drove up the road uh, toward where we thought the crash was, and we started seeing people. And, uh, we finally got to the house, and oh, I think we met some ambulances coming out as we were going up, going down there. And uh, uh, we asked somebody how to get back into the site. And I never will forget, we, we had to... The way that we went, the shortest way, we walked in. I think you could get in with some four-wheel drive vehicles. And uh, we ended up walking a log across a little creek to get into the site. And uh, well, when we got there, there were still, uh, still a lot of injured people uh, sitting and lying around in the woods, leaning up against trees. They all seemed to be hurt in shock. The ones that weren't seriously injured uh, appeared to be in shock. Approximately how long was that after the crash? Uh, gee, I don't know. Within two hours. Within I mean, two hours? Okay. I, I would say, you know, it may have been an hour, it may have been two. Right. It's hard to tell. Yeah, okay. It's hard to tell. It, it, took, it took quite a while to uh, for the rescue crews to, to get to get to the people because uh, of where the plane crashed. It really wasn't all that far from uh, from a public road, but it was far enough. You know, it was, I don't know, probably maybe a mile off the public road. It was in a wooded area. And uh, as I recall, you, need, you had to cross a field to get to it. And then there was that little creek that came into play. They had to... Uh, they either had to go around the creek to get to them or, or across it. Uh, it was it was sort of in a swampy, wooded area where they where they crashed. I think uh, I think uh, speculation was that they were trying to get to the to the field probably to put it down, and they didn't quite make it to the field. That would be uh, Mr. Motesfield, correct? I'm not sure who. Uh, I'd have to go back and research all that just just from memory. Uh, I, I, I think we probably had it in the place. Oh, I was talking to Mr. Moat yesterday. He said it was like 150 feet from his field. Yeah, well, that, that sounds correct. I, I expect it was 150 feet. They're about a quarter mile to a mile from the, uh, he didn't call it a highway, he called it a side road, but a two-lane side road that would have been wide enough for the plane to land on? Uh, at the time? so, as I recall, I think it was a paved road. It, it, yeah. It may have been wide enough to land on. Of course, they had, uh, they weren't far from the, uh, from the Pike County, uh, Macomb Pike County Airport. In fact, they had um, some ten I, I later talked to some friends of mine who were playing tennis at the Firmwood Country Club, which is uh, near the airport. I mean, it's like within a mile of the airport. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they saw the plane going over. Uh, going actually over the airport. Uh, or near more, the airport. more or less, right, okay. More or less, yeah. You know, within a half a mile of the airport. Uh, 
before it crashed, uh, it was, it was, they said it was low as if it were, you know, they, they assumed that it was, that it either was about to land at the airport or had to take off from the airport. So, uh, you know, that's the ironic thing. They had, uh, they had passed the Darn Airport before they, before they crashed. Wow, I'm just, uh, as a re I think I have the paper actually in front of me right now. I'm just like, uh, the pictures, like the paper I have is obviously, is, is a real paper that I, uh, got off a friend of the band, but it is in, uh, you know, fairly rough shape being, you know, 18 years old almost. I'm just trying to, to picture in my mind what the wreckage was like, uh, the back page I have is uh, all yellow and whatnot. I can't really see the picture up in the upper right, or sorry, upper left-hand corner of the uh, airplane itself. But I was wondering if you could describe the airplane. Oh, it's a, it was uh, it was a DC three, wasn't it? Uh, Convair two forty. Two forty, okay. They're very similar. They're very similar. Okay, it's a, a twenty-inch prop driven. Uh, and uh, the it, it it went well. It didn't go just just vertically straight down, but the, but the nose went down first. And uh, the uh, the tail, as I recall, was sort of sticking up. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't think the tail ever hit the ground. It was kind of perpendicular, sticking up. And uh, as I remember, the, the pilot and the co-pilot, the people in the front, I think the nearer the front of the plane that the folks were, the uh, they were the ones that got killed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the front of it was badly damaged. Uh, the tail section was not uh, was not damaged that much. And I, as I recall, the people who were more toward the rear uh, didn't get the injuries as bad as the ones toward the front. Was the uh, fuselage in one piece, two piece, or three piece? Or oh, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> don't really remember those pictures. I, I think, uh, I believe it was all in one piece, though. But, but I, I'm not, uh, I'm not certain about that. I think the fuselage pretty much stayed intact. But the front, the front part of it was was smashed up so badly. Right. Three gentlemen I talked to last night mentioned um, they actually uh, took part in the rescue, uh, like pulling bodies out and whatnot. Uh, they mentioned a smell, not quite a fuel, but a, a certain smell. I was wondering if you could, uh, if you noticed anything of that nature? Or? I don't. I don't recall any smell. Okay. Um. I don't. I don't remember smelling. I don't remember smelling anything. Uh, there, there were. I think there were a good many vehicles there, and then of course uh, that uh, that helicopter was hovering over. It was making a good bit of noise, and uh, you know, it could have been. You know, they could have been getting some smell from that. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't remember any, any particular odor. Okay. And uh, they also mentioned that uh, there was, while there was the uh, rescue workers, you know, were were terrific and whatnot, there was also, like, uh, on the highway that they mentioned, I don't know if that be 568 or, or whatever, but there was, like, almost a mile of cars of, like, rubberneckers, sightseers, and, and whatnot, just coming from all over the area, just to, not just the... Uh, Gillsburg or Macomb area, but someone mentioned New Orleans and and whatnot. Uh, just just to uh, to see, I guess. Yeah, I don't. Uh, we uh, we went down there and uh, and I don't know how. I don't really remember how long we stayed there. Uh, we got pictures and uh, got as much information as we could there, and then we came back to the hospital mm -hmm. to try to get more information. We were, uh, we didn't, we didn't print our newspaper until the next day, but uh, 
the Associated Press. Oh, every, excuse me. A lot of other news agencies, a lot of newspapers were calling us, so we we got some people down in our office. And just we, we started covering the story, and uh, I I think as the night as the evening wore on and the word got out, probably as it got on the broadcast media, uh, there probably was a pretty good crowd that congregated there. I know uh, I know at the hospital a lot of people showed up. There were all lot doctors and nurses turned out. I don't know that uh, I don't remember I don't remember the crowd being a hindrance to any rescue or efforts or anything like that. Right. Uh, anytime you have some Anytime you have a plane crash and people hear about it, it's just you know, yeah. Go look at it. It's like flies to honey, right? I don't, I don't know how far people came to came to look at that. I think several days after that, uh, a lot of folks uh, went by and tried to see the sight and that sort of thing. Uh, the band was, uh, was, was pretty well known back then. Yes, they were. And I, 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 don't, I don't think it was any worse down there than it would have been anywhere where a well-known rock band had crashed. And that was like going to be like my next question. When uh, did you realize that this plane was carrying uh, Leonard Skinner? Was it like that uh, night? Fairly soon. Fairly soon. Fairly soon, really? Yeah. I, uh, I, I forgot uh, where... On the way down there, I can't remember whether we knew who it was then or not, but but early in the evening, at least by the time we got back to the hospital, uh, we 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 knew who it was. I think maybe maybe before we got down there, I'm not sure, but the word got out uh, real quickly that it was it was a Leonard Skinner band. I I, I will confess that. Uh, that I didn't know who they were. The right. I, you know, the first time I'd heard of Leonard Skinner, I was not... Not aware of who they were, of course. I Sorry. Right. I mean, I was, but, you know, I, I found out real quick. You found out real quick, and, yeah. When I first... When somebody first said it was Leonard Skinner that crashed, you know, my first reaction was, who's Leonard Skinner? Right, okay. Well, it, it, was, it was a big story for us. Anytime, you know, if, anytime we have a, a some kind of catastrophe like that that kills uh, five, six people uh, and, and injures a lot more, in particular if they're if they're well-known people, uh, it, becomes, it becomes our major news for a few days. And um, how did the, I don't know it goes on, but you know certain there were certain names and whatnot that, that helped. But how did the uh, county in, in general just like just I'm, just by the four names I have, I know there had to be more than four people that you know helped pull out um, people and whatnot. Other than National Guard, by the time the National Guard were or the FAA or whatever arrived, I mean, like, how many approximate people would you say were at the cross site itself helping the uh, victims? Oh, gee, I don't know. By the time you got there. You know, the sheriff, sheriff, some of his people were down there. The law enforcement people were there. Uh, ambulance, uh, ambulance crews from the hospital were there. Uh, uh, residents in, the, in that area down there were there. How many? I, 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 I really don't have any idea because uh, keep in mind it was dark. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was there was some light, uh, but it was hard of you know spotlights, the light from that helicopter, and uh, flashlights and that sort of stuff. Thing. So uh, I I think uh, I think there were. There were adequate uh, rescue people there. You know, any, yeah. I, I don't have any idea. No idea. Okay. And you mentioned in your um, it was a bad place.
tights to bring the plane down, and why is that? Just because of the, the, the everyone I've talked to yesterday said it, they thought it was good because of the pine trees uh, more or less uh, cushioned the blow. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I would have thought that uh, I would have thought if you got the feel and landed the sucker, it would have been a lot better than hit the pine tree. That's what I thought, too. You know, I disagree with that theory. Uh, I, I would think, too, like if I, myself being on the plane would want to be landing on the field yeah. uh, and not in a bunch of pine trees. Yeah. And, and really, I... I, it's my opinion that that's what the pilot was trying to do, was get to that field. He was trying to get to the field and not the highway, in your opinion? Uh, I don't know. Because according to the FAA report, he was the nose was actually pointed towards the airport. Uh, he may have even tried to be, he, he may have been trying to get to the airport. Okay. He may have, he may have located the airport. I, I don't know. I, I don't I, I, I disagree, though, that uh, it hit the pine tree. Uh, I, the reason I said it was a bad place to bring the plane down, I think, was probably twofold because of the trees, the wooded area, and uh, hard to get to. And hard to get to. That that creek in there, uh, or stream. I don't know if it was a creek or a plank, but it was a stream of water that uh, was fairly deep, or. I don't know how deep it was. There was a, I walked across a log to get to it. Was, it was, uh, you know, it was... So it was deep enough as a, for a hindrance? It was a hindrance, yeah. Okay. With bear in mind, this, this was October. I don't... It wasn't... Uh, it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't for cold or anything like that, but it wasn't, it wasn't real warm. It wasn't real warm, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I guess uh, I had just asked the... I say other gentlemen the same question. Has this affected your life or anyone? Like, do you have any, uh, when someone mentions the uh, the crash, well, I guess what would be the first thing that, that comes to your mind? Oh, the first first thing that comes to my mind is uh, is, is going down there and covering it. I've been a, I've been in the newspaper business for 38 years. Back then, I had been in it nearly as long as I have now, but, uh, but I've covered, uh, and help direct the coverage of uh, of a lot of news over the years, and uh, this this certainly was not the highlight of it. It, it was a it was a good story, and it was it was one that uh, oh, you know, you get your adrenaline going, mm -hmm. something like that. sure. Uh, it, I, I I guess it would be wrong to say that it's fun covering. But, but when you're in the, when you're in the newspaper, you know, when you're in the news business, uh, if, if, if you don't want it to happen, but if it happened to you, you want it in your neighborhood, part of it. right? I hear it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it has not affected my life, and it was just uh, it was uh, just uh, uh, one of the one of the major stories that I have to be involved in covering, and. Uh, and as you already mentioned, I think we did a pretty good job. Of you did a terrific job. So I mean, you know, for days uh, lead uh, after it, uh, every day. Uh, I don't believe there was a Sunday paper, but uh, every day for five days, you know, you were um, up updating. Um, we did not have a. We we started our Sunday paper a year after that. We started our Sunday paper in 1978, and I crashed. Right, right. But, uh, and it hadn't left, it hadn't left any lasting uh, impact on me for a long my life. Okay. But, uh, just, uh, just when someone mentioned it, you just think of the getting there in the rush and seeing the plane and whatnot? Right. Okay. And, uh, I, uh, have you talked to uh, Have you talked to any of the doctors that were um, uh, Mr. Dwayne Easley? Um, I talked to him. And he said his, he and his wife knew of only one doctor that was on the scene, Doctor Henry Lewis. And uh, I was going to try and talk to him, and I was going to talk to uh, Mr. Richmond. Renan Richmond. Yes. Yeah, Renan would be a good guy to talk to. He's still at the uh, he's still at the Southwest Mississippi Regional Medical Center, and he was working there at the time. 
Uh, that that's a that's a pretty interesting sidelight of the to the story. Uh, the hospital in Renan can tell you, uh, but it had not been open very long, like less than five years, maybe less than that. And uh, this was, you know, I think most all hospitals practice for emergencies. Mm -hmm. and this was probably the first uh, big emergency that they, well, yeah, they, they'd had the tornado. We'd had a big tornado here before, so they, they had... They, they uh, mentioned you know, tornado. This, this, this was the first big plane crash. Had. <laughs> right. And uh, I think, uh, even though I, I, I forgot, I didn't know Hank Lewis was down on the scene. I didn't know really who was on the scene, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of doctors showed up at the hospital, and they, uh, you know, they set up a sort of an extra trauma unit they uh, they they did a good job over there, I think, at the hospital, and and uh, kind of like we at the newspaper, uh, they probably kind of enjoyed doing it. It was, uh, you know, they 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 had all these emergency procedures in intact, in and they found out that they worked. So Renan and Hank Lewis would would be good people to talk to. Okay. Now, I thought I should talk to the man who wrote the story that I've been reading for all these years. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, say what a job that your paper had done. I mean, it was just amazing. The updates and how he, I believe it was the next day you were talking to one of the survivors, I believe it was Clayton Johnson, who, who said they had mistrust in the airplane and, and whatnot like that. It was just, I thought it was just totally amazing, the the coverage that you did. And uh, I can't praise you enough for that. Well, thanks a lot. I mean, it's... Uh, Scott, I, I believe Mike Williamson, who was a reporter for us at the time, wrote a lot of those follow-up stories. Uh, I don't think Mike was, I'm not sure where he was the night of the crash, but uh, he probably got a lot of those quotes at the hospital. Either either Mike or Patsy Brumfield, I can't, I can't remember. They should have my lines. Okay, yeah. Actually, all I have in front of me is the 21st, but I can, you know, go back. Yeah. But, uh, like I said, I won't just thought uh, you know, I'll talk to the, the man okay, who wrote I it. I enjoy and, talking to you about it. And I appreciate taking the time. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Bye-bye.